Chef Buck here, and today we're gonna cook up some jalapeno poppers. Woohoo! I got the jalapenos here. We're gonna do up six, and these are ginormous. Look at these things, they're as big as my head. Uh, ideally, I like smaller ones, but any size will work. You just gotta make sure and fill them with cream cheese adequately enough to make them less dangerous. Or any kind of cheese, really. Ah, uh, cream cheese. No. It huh? could be cheddar cheese. It could be anything. Nah, cheddar cheese is so heavy. And it's, it's just harder to work with. Cream cheese. Cream cheese. I know some people would argue with you. It sounds dreamy. Really? Time. I don't think so. Argue yeah. in the comments below. But come here. We're, we're trying to make some boats here. We want to take our jalapenos and make them into these vessels. As Chekhov on the Enterprise would say. He would say they were vessels. Captain, check out these vessels. But this here, you want to make a little skiff, and then you want to make sure and leave the back intact to put your outboard motor on. And it also will keep the cream cheese from uh, kind of melting out and going all over your skillet or pan or whatever. But to make these boats, you want to take your pepper, and you just want to kind of find the lay of the pepper. You know, so that it will sit kind of flat, because you don't want to do it like this. You know, because then, you know, if you cut it this way and then you try to set it like there to cook, it's going to fall over. So just find the natural way it falls over. Oh, no, no, no. Before we get to that part, we got to cut off the stem. But you have to do it carefully. You want to cut just the very little itsy bitsy end off. You don't want to cut it so deep that you're taking off your little outboard motor, motor holder. Um, so now we get the lay of the pepper. Oops. And uh, that looks good there. So I'm going to turn it halfway so that I got two flat sides. And I'm just going to cut it right down the center. A nice even cut so that I've got two sort of equidistant, equilateral, equally sized sides. So that I can evenly distribute my cheese. Now to... Uh, cut this so that we leave the back intact. You can take a knife and kind of start it like that if you want to. Just be careful not to pierce the underside of your boat. You don't want to compromise your hull. Of your vessel. That's right. This is a very nautical dish. And then you could take a spoon and just kind of dig the inner membrane and seeds out just like this here. And you want to be careful. Like I like to angle it down so that I'm not, cause you don't want to, you know, have the uh, juices or the seeds or anything having to do the pepper with the pepper. You don't want to point it towards your face because the pepper's hot. I mean, there's chemicals in here, you know, that will burn your skin. You know, I never have to use gloves. Some people with sensitive skin or super duper hot peppers, you can wear plastic gloves if you want. You know that. I've never had to do that. Peppers don't bother me that much, but for some people they do. So we got a nice boat there with a non-compromised hull. So let's see. Now I did that with a knife, but if you want to, you can also just do it with a spoon. You know, you might have to press a little bit harder there, but you can do it with just the end of your spoon if you want. And then just carefully scrape out the inner membrane and seeds. The main thing is to not pierce your hole and not compromise this back outboard motor part. The other part is to make sure you don't put your hands near your mouth or yeah, your yeah. eyeballs. <laughs> That's right. You don't want to touch your face. You know, if you have to uh, go to the bathroom in the middle of your... Uh, the jalapeno preparations, you want to be careful with your special areas. Just anything. Just be very mindful. Come on down here. We'll if the world is the perfect, line. you finish messing with your peppers, and then you clean your hands thoroughly. Well, sure. But, you know, here's the thing. You know, when you when you get a little bit older, sometimes you don't always have a, a say. Oh, Lord. You know, and when nature calls. All right. But as you can see, I was kind of going slow with the initial explanation, but as you can see, you can do it very rapidly. It doesn't take much time to prep this stuff. I think I got some chemical on my arm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta be careful too as a camera person. You don't want me to flick any of this stuff on you. Don't wanna rub my eyes. 
All right, because it can burn. It does burn. Now here, I want to show you a little trick here in a second, but let me go ahead and get these started first. So I'm going to turn my oven on broil. We'll get our oven started and we'll put it on broil. And I already had this started before to start it heated up so we, we wouldn't have to wait too long. And, you know, we were making these, we made a few batches of these this week, and we were doing it in a skillet. You know, we were kind of uh, roasting our peppers a little bit in the skillet, and then we were filling them with cheese and finishing them off in the oven. But we're going to try something new today. We're just going to do it in a broiling pan, which is kind of how I used to do it anyway. But we're going to do it a little bit differently. Because we uh, want to char Yeah, because we're going to try to char our peppers. But the great thing about using a broiling pan is that, you know, you've got these little uh, divots and rows where you can put your peppers in here. And that'll kind of hold them up a little bit. But if you don't have a broiling pan, you can just use a regular old baking pan or you can use a skillet. The thing is with the skillet, you're going to kind of uh, be restricted on how many peppers you can do depending on the size of your, your skillet. But I'm going to go ahead and get these under the broiler so maybe we can toast these up a little bit and get a little bit of a char on them before we fill them with cheese. So I'll get these going. Now, while that is going, here, let me show you this little trick. If, you know, you were cooking your peppers and, you know, it was irritating your hands or causing you any kind of issue like that, you can just take a little milk, a little half and half or cream or any kind of dairy product, and you can just kind of clean your hands or coat your hands with that dairy. And there's a, you know, it's a natural chemical thingamabob where the dairy negates or minimizes some of the pepperiness. The capsaicin? Is that what it is? The I don't chemical? know. It's, it's some kind of sciencey stuff. But anyway, <laughs> you can help to alleviate some of the burn with dairy, which is why, which is why we're making jalapeno poppers in the first place. That's why jalapeno poppers are so delicious because jalapenos are hot and they will kill you if you're not careful with them, but you can tame that heat with dairy, which is why we're going to put cream cheese in here. And this is just some plain old cream cheese that I have right here, just regular old plain Jane cream cheese, and you can use that. And we're also going to use some goat cheese. That's this herb. This is just an Woo! herb. Fancy. Herb and garlic goat cheese, and this is very good in jalapeno poppers as well. But this is much more expensive. I'm surprised yeah. Chef Buck is using that. Well, you know, I, I don't deserve this, but Camera Girl, she deserves the best, Aww. so we're going to have that. But I like just plain cream cheese. You don't have to do anything this with this. You can just put cream cheese plain in your poppers. Although we're going to fancy ours up a little bit with some cracked black pepper. That's always good with bacon. Have you told them? Have you told them you're going to oh, put yeah, bacon? Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to top our poppers with bacon at the end. Because these are bacony jalapeno poppers. <laughs> okay, so we got plain cream cheese and we got some black pepper. And I'm also going to put some Italian seasoning in here. Oops, I think I got one that's open. And, you know, you can really adjust these flavors as you like. You don't have, you know, put as much seasoning in here as you want to. That's plenty, I think. And we're also going to add a little bit of sun-dried tomato in a little bit, but I'm not going to do that to all of the poppers. So I'll just mix this little bit up right here. And then after we fill up some of our poppers with this cream cheese, we'll add some of the other. But I'll go ahead and, and cut up some of this uh, tomato here so we'll have it. And we'll put some potential ratios on the blog. Ah, uh, yeah. Camera Girl's going to write up a blog and I'll have a link down below and you can check out the written recipe. Uh, for this jalapeno popper dish. And I'll also link to another older jalapeno popper dish that I have, which is a non-bacon jalapeno popper. And that recipe link will be we down below. We have three. We have a cheeseburger popper. Do we? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. right. Got to, uh... And you've got another baked one. And then you have, a, um, you did something else on the skillet. Yeah, we love jalapeno poppers. But I'm going to go ahead and chop up a little bit of this smoked sun-dried tomato to add to our poppers too. Now the thing is when we've had this before, you know, the combination of the cream cheese and the Italian seasoning, and then these sun-dried tomatoes, it almost makes your poppers have a sort of a pizza taste. If you add a little bit of garlic powder. Oh, especially, yeah. And, you know, you can add pizza type stuff 
to your poppers, and they'll be kind of pizza-y. With a bit of kick. Yep. Alrighty, let's see. Let's see, it's not a tremendous amount of color. Get, get down there, you see that? But we got, we got them started cooking a little bit. So let me get them on here. And now we will fill them up with some cream cheese. Now they're kind of hot to handle. So you might want to give them a minute to cool down if you want. But uh, I don't have that luxury because the camera's rolling. What? Silly <laughs> rabbit. Of course you have a moment. Uh, do I? No, I don't because we'll run out of film. Because we shoot all of our cooking videos on film. Oh Just like gosh. Quentin Tarantino. You know, this is an art. You know, we're not we're not putting this on yeah, video. I... We got to put this on film, and then we got to send it off off to the film people. Alrighty, now I'm gonna fill this with cream cheese, and you don't have to overfill it. Just fill it up to the top of your boat. You don't have to do any more than that because it makes a mess. Yeah, it'll leak over it and blah blah blah, which won't be the end of the world. But but why do that? You know, if you don't have to, so. It. I'm gonna fill these up here. I tell you what, and these these peppers are hot. I mean, they're like hot because they they're out of the oven. So <laughs> you can let them cool off a little bit before you do this here, because you're not gonna be you're not gonna have the pressure of having a a crew, a camera crew working that you're gonna have to pay. Oh my lord! That's right. I can't allow camera girl to get into overtime. Let's see. So now these are just cream cheese and Italian seasoning and a little bit of black pepper. And so we've got four of these. Should I do the rest with the uh, sure. with the tomato? So there's the sun-dried tomato that I chopped up. Plus it'll let these cool off a minute. Oh, what are you talking about? This is gonna, take, this, this is gonna take all of uh, 10 seconds. And so I'm mixing up that little bit of chopped tomato in there. And again, anything that you wanna put in your cream cheese, that you feel like doing. You know what's good is um, Everything's a little nice. bit of minced garlic. You know, you could oh, take a raw yeah. Yeah. chopped or minced garlic and put in your cream cheese, you know, if you like that. Or scallions or, or green onions. Yeah, green onions. And like you said, we've actually got some uh, peppers that we stuffed with a little bit of cooked uh, ground beef. And then we top that with cheese. So they're almost like uh, cheeseburger poppers. So you can really get creative with your jalapeno poppers. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill the rest of these with some of this goat cheese. And just a creamy cheese is ideal. And you wanna have this cream cheese sitting out a little bit before you start, just because it'll be softened. And then it just makes it easier for it to put in your poppers. And if you have a microwave, you can Soften them that way. Yeah, you have you, to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can definitely uh, soften it for a few seconds in a microwave, but you don't want to uh, go too far because you don't want your cheese to be liquidy because that just makes it a pain in the butt. Yeah, it's going to heat up anyway. Stuff your peppers. All righty. So what are we doing here all together? I think I'm doing Twelve? Six, six peppers. And these are ginormous. So these are very filling. So we're going to have quite a few of these. Well, generally, you want four poppers a person. Uh, four halves. Yeah. So what is that? No matter what the size. Well, then, so then you're just talking about, that's just two. No, four per each one. So two poppers per person. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six. This is six peppers. And you and I will easily polish off four of these each. So that's not going to give us a lot of leftovers. But anyway, you'll have to figure it out. You know, you'll have to figure out how many people you're cooking for and how many you want to have, which is why it's good to do it on a broiling pan. Because if you're going to do it in a skillet, you're sort of going to be limited to the size of your skillet. But it's a nice way to get the char. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to go ahead and put our bacon on here. And like I said, I already got these cut into some sizes that are better suited for a pepper. But they look like they're overly big going on the pepper, the way they hang over them. But this bacon, when it cooks, it's going to shrink. So it's actually going to end up being just the perfect size. You don't want to use just enough bacon 
to cover up your pepper. Like if I just had, like if I cut this in half and put this on here, you know, it's going to shrink up so much, it's not going to be enough on my pepper. So have have a little bit of a generous cut of bacon. You know, almost swamp your jalapenos. Now I'm going to go ahead, prop these up on my little broiling pan. And the good thing about the broiling pan is having these little slits to have your pepper sit in here. And plus, you know, the, this uh, bacon, as it cooks, you know, the fat's going to run off of the jalapenos and that way it'll be caught so it won't be sitting in the bacon grease which is the way it does when we do it in a skillet and it's not the end of the world you, you can know. put it on paper towels or something well not while cool. it's cooking in the oven yeah you, no. you, when you take them out you can drain them but yeah. you know this way we won't have to fool with the bacon grease as much Alrighty, so my pan's not even that hot anymore well, let's come over here this will be the jalapeno popper cam and okay my oven is still on broil it's still super duper hot so i'm going to slide this in here and now we're going to let it cook away for six minutes six minutes seems to be the magic number for us you know even after four minutes i think they'd be edible you know that's a little the bacon's a little soft for us at that point and i cooked them the other day for eight minutes under the broiler and, you know, some people might like that. You know, the bacon was definitely a little bit crispier. But I find that if the bacon is softer on the jalapeno popper, it's a little easier to eat. So just cook the bacon to the doneness that you like done. And then these poppers are going to be finished. So we're waiting on the bacon, and we'll look at them in six minutes and see what they look like. All righty, boom. It has been six minutes. I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. We'll get it out of here. Alrighty. So how's that look, camera girl? It smells delicious. Yep. Oops. One of my boats starting to capsize there. I'm losing a little cream cheese right here, but that looks like the only real nautical accident that we've had. As you can see, the bacon has shriveled up you know, to pretty much the size of the peppers. So that was a good size that I had on there. Now I could let this cook a little bit more and let the bacon get even crispier. But I find that they're easier to eat with the bacon not as crispy. Especially when they're this big. Yeah, yeah, these are big peppers. Uh, actually, you know, it'd be nice to take a bite right now, but they're just too hot oven temperature wise so I'm not going to do that but I will get them off the uh, pan here so they'll stop cooking and I'll go ahead and plate them up and then I'm going to uh, give them a few minutes and let them rest and oh, cool down before flour. I eat one if I can uh, get them off of this pan here without burning my hand too much so be careful with these here but I don't want to leave them on this hot dish because I don't want them to sit and get overly hot and soggy because they're cooked up enough because we had cooked them a little bit before we even stuffed them with cheese. Uh, but if you check uh, my older recipe, I don't do that. I just let them cook in the oven, uh, put them in the oven raw with the cheese in them and let them bake. But then it takes a much longer time. I think the total cooking time uh, for these was probably 10 minutes total or 12 minutes total. So this isn't a long dish. It doesn't take a long time to prepare this. The thing that takes the longest is cleaning the peppers. You know, just carefully slicing off the ends and then cleaning out the seeds and membrane. That takes the longest time because you want to be careful uh, not to compromise your boat. But that's it. Uh, these uh, jalapeno poppers are done, so we'll give them a few minutes to cool down, and then we'll do the official taste test. Okay, they've been sitting around for about 10 minutes now, and I have resisted not eating one. Because the thing is, when I eat these, you know, the risk of a burn for me is greater from the cheese. <laughs> you know, popping these in my mouth right outside of the oven, you know, this cream cheese is just like molten lava. So I'm not really that worried about the pepper, but you got it focused on there. You see that bacon, it's not overly crispy. 
And Camera Girl and I both like crispy bacon, but it doesn't have to be crispy to taste great in a popper. And if you want it crispy, you can always put the bacon, crisp it up, and put it in your mixture instead oh, of on top. You mean cook it and yeah. mix it up in the cheese? Yeah, but having the bacon... Oh, I agree. Even not crispy on top, it's still, it's more bacony like that, I think. Yeah. But these things are kind of messy to eat like this here. It's yeah. going to be hard for me just to take a bite like this here. Yeah. Make excuses, Chef Buck. There's a Chef Buck bite. I'm just saying, it would be easier for me to put the whole thing in my mouth. Yeah. Surprise. Mm. But it's so tasty. You go ahead and do a taste test, camera girl. Let's turn the tables. That looks delicioso. See, the best bite is the little end. Let's see. But this has got the sun-dried tomatoes, so. Oh, that one? Let's, tell me if it tastes like a pizza. No, it's not very hot. <laughs> it's not overly hot. Well, how many of these poppers are you going to eat? I was saying oh, we're going to I was saying we're going to eat four each. Oh, you're, that's the only one you're going to have? Oh, yeah. Okay. On camera. But anyway, there you have it. Camera Girl is going to write this recipe out. So I'll put a link down below, and you can go over to my food channel and uh, check the recipe out. Uh, we'll also have a link down below to our Patreon. Anything of interest, there will be a link down below. Uh, but that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you in the future. Bye-bye. I'm telling you, the little end is the good bite. Oh, Chef Buck bite.